Welcome back to the Rust speedrun. We are on chapter 3.2, data types. And skimming through this article, it looks like a bunch of snippets and things that can probably fit into one project. So I'm going to go ahead into our 03 folder here and do a cargo new data types. And now that we have that, let's start reading through and figure out what we've got. If you're new here, this is Page Key Tech, where we build things that already exist but we build them our way and we build them open source and document them in these videos in order to educate ourselves and others and take back tech. So there are two data type subsets, or it says we're going to look at two of them. Maybe there's more. Scalar and compound. It must know all types at compile time. The compiler can sometimes infer, but if many are possible, we have to add an annotation. Okay, so it's saying we have to say U32. We run it, it warns, that we didn't use this variable, but it works. What if we remove u32? Do we get that error? Yes. Type annotations needed. And it gives a very helpful error. Wow, that's cool. Okay, the theory. So let's see what we have here. Scalar types, a single value, four primary scalar types. Integers, floats, number, oh, floating point numbers. Okay, so ints, floats, booleans, and characters. Okay, what does it have to tell us about integers? Know what an integer is? Unsigned int. 32 bits of space, okay. So we have 8 bit, 16, 32, 64, 128, whoa. And architecture size, ooh, wow, that's interesting. Signed and unsigned, okay. So whether or not the leftmost bit indicates the sign, to his complement, okay. I size and U size, never seen that before. Depends on the architecture of the computer. 64 if you're on a 64, 32 if you're on a 32 bit. I'm waiting for 128 bit computers to come out, that'll be cool, whoa. You can use a type suffix if you want to do it for a literal. That's crazy. So we could say let guess2 equals 57 as an 8-bit integer. First of all, let's get it to compile. And we can proceed with the underscore to get rid of the warning. I forgot a semicolon. But that does work. Now, what if we do it and it's too large to store in a U8? First of all, what would that be? 2 to the 8th max value, 256. So how about, first of all, 256 should be too big, right? Since zeros. Yep, overflow. So it's a compiler error. That's awesome. Oh, you can also use underscores in literals to make it easier to read. I want to try that too. 1,000. Oh, I got to fix that. 255. And if we print line, guess three. Oh, as a string. Okay, here. There we go. It prints 1,000. Now, we could do that for a million too. Or uh, that's a million, right? Still works. And it's just, that's totally just for the programmer. It, it completely edits that part out. It's like a comment. Interesting. Now, what if I put arbitrary underscores in, into my million here? Still works. Still ignores it. What if I put like a bunch, a ridiculous number? Still works. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. What's next? Oh, some examples. 98,222. Okay. Oh, you can do 0x. You can do octal. You can 0b. Zero, zero, zero you can do a byte, but only for characters. All right, that's pretty standard. That's just like C, I think. Integers by default i32. Okay. I size is when indexing, good to know, typically. Okay, so you can explicitly handle overflows using wrapping add. You can use checked. You can use overflowing. So these are all ways to check for buffer overflows or saturating. Okay, so that's good to know that there's four ways of doing that. Floats, float 32, float 64, that's all we got. Good, default by F64. More precision, same speed on modern CPUs. Okay, aha, good to know, okay. Numeric operations, add, subtract, multiply, divide, remainder. Integer division is a floor operation, basically, just like every other language. And here's us doing some math. Great. Looks pretty familiar. All operators. That's a bunch. Okay. Boolean type. Straightforward. Okay. Character type. Interesting that you can have emojis and Unicode characters as characters. Single quotes are a character. That makes sense. Four bytes, 32 bits. Whoa. Oh, that's insane. I thought this character was 8 bits. Okay, so it's 32 bits for a character. Okay, so there's more to the story, and we'll find out later. Cool. Good to know that you can't just grab a character type and grab 8 bits like you would in C, which relies on ASCII. Okay. Compound types. Groupings. Okay, so we have tuples or tuples and arrays. The tuple or tuple type, however you say it. Fixed length. They can't grow. They group a variety of types. Comma separated list of values in parentheses. Each position has a type. They don't have to be the same. So optional type parameters, I guess it can assume this. Integer 32 by default, float 64 by default, U8 explicit, or else that would have been U3 or I32. Okay. Is that the case? Integer defaults to I32. Okay. I thought so. Good to know. 
So we must use pattern matching to get it out, or can we index it like we do in Python? That's my question. Well, let's try both, I guess. So if we run this, we should see 6.4. Yep, we do. What if we do this instead, tuple of one? It's probably gonna fail. Yeah, it didn't work. What if we do y equals tuple of one? It still doesn't work. Huh. So we have to explode the entire tuple just to get to one of the values? I don't know if I like that. Oh, you use dot. Okay, let's try that. Tuple dot one. Oh, it worked. Okay, awesome. We use the period to get inside of the tuple and you can index with the period. That's kind of weird, but cool. A tuple without any values is a unit. Empty value, empty return. And the return unit, it's like returning null, I guess, kind of. Cool. Array type. Arrays have a fixed length, okay? Arrays allocate to the stack instead of the heap. Good to know. Okay, so I guess this like literally just adds to the stack, which is the same stack that you're pushing and popping things off of and executing instructions off of, which you can run out of space. It's probably easier, I would assume, than the heap. My understanding of the heap, if you know more about the heap, please let me know. I don't really know that much, but I know that's where you go if you want to mem CPY or mem. If you want to grab a big chunk of memory to use, you go to the heap, whereas the stack is very tightly integrated with the code that's running, right? Right? I don't know. If you know, let me know. Sounds like we'll find out in chapter four. The vector is more flexible, provided by the standard library, and is allowed to grow or shrink. Always use a vector if you're unsure. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. I guess it's like, uh, well, I guess C++ calls it a vector too, like a linked list maybe, however it's implemented. Okay, you would use it array for months because you know it's a fixed size. You write its type using square brackets with the type of each element, semicolon, and the number. Oh, interesting. So this is an array of signed 32-bit numbers, integers and there's five of them. Can you declare it? Oh, you can. Oh, you can specify the initial value and the length. Interesting. So if I wanted, okay, so A equals three, five is the same as saying three, 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 three. Okay, it just said that, sorry. Raise a single chunk of memory. Fix size, allocate on the stack. Indexing, no difference there from any other language. Invalid access. It compiles, if you use run, if you pass the end, it panics. Index out of bounds. Runtime error. Rust actually checks if it's past the end of the array. That's awesome. The, the primitive array, and it checks if you go past the end of it. Happening at runtime. Memory safety principles. Yep, yep. Immediately accesses, immediately exits. That's good. Good, chapter nine sounds juicy. That's it though for data types. So I guess, you know, I learned quite a bit from this little section. I'm gonna call it a video. Thanks for watching. See you for the next one.